those who are new to our traditions. Our bishop gives permission when licensed for lay persons, that is people not ordained, to preach the good news, that is to give the sermon at this time. We're lucky and grateful and blessed here at St. Thomas to have two lay preachers, uh, Miss Paulette and Miss Linda. And so Linda this morning is our lay preacher offering this morning. Thank you. Let us pray. Eternal and everlasting God, we thank you for the blessing of this beautiful day. We thank you for the lives gathered here and online to worship. Thank you for your love and your blessing, your abundance. Father God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us as we worship and create in us clean hearts and renew in us a right spirit, O Lord. We give you thanks and we praise you in the name of the one who saves, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is in the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 35. He declares who he is, God's Son, and what he is, the bread of life. He did not ask, what can you do for me? He implies, it is what I can do for you. This is the crowd that had been fed from the five barley loaves and two fish. The crowd, devising a way to make him their worldly king by force, followed him from one side of the sea to the other. They wanted a sign like Moses gave of manna in the wilderness, when indeed, this manna was from God. Jesus' way of describing eternal life was using the symbol of bread. But this bread, Jesus, is forever, permanent and secure. This life-giving bread is unconditional, irrevocable, unfathomable love, like no one on this earth can provide. They asked Jesus what works we should do. We ask the same questions here at St. Thomas. Jesus replies, believe. This work of faith is done in the heart, not with hands. If you believe, you will never go hungry again. Our collective work is to accept the love of God that is in Jesus. And we know from Bishop Michael Curry, if it is not about love, then it is not about God. Today we begin our summer preaching series, God is Love. God is Love is a series intended to liberate us. This precious gift, God's love, is for all. The topics of this series will include the highlighted characteristics of God's love, including love that is unconditional, sacrificial, compassionate, forgiving, and empowering. Bishop Curry charged us to memorize two verses of scripture. Please turn back to the cover of your bulletin if we know these scriptures, we can live them. Let us read them together. It's where it says God is love in the middle of your bulletin on the front page. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and who knows God. Everyone who does not love does not know God. For God is love. First John. Four, seven through eight. Praise be to God because you and I are made for love. The man from Galilee will take your hand through every circumstance you face. However, not everyone believes that Jesus is the bread of life or that God is love for them. 
Years ago, I met someone in a surgery waiting room who shared that he had no relationship with God and did not think that such a relationship was even possible. His wife had tripped over their dog. Turns out she broke her arm and her wrist. He described the break as one you would see on a football field where the bones were jutting out. They had gone to the emergency room and left the ER without anything strong enough to hold back the pain. Now, it was unclear to me how, but she was able to be in outpatient surgery the next day. The next day. Now, in my many years of trying to get surgery scheduled for me or a loved one, next day outpatient surgery just doesn't happen regardless of how bad you're hurting. Can anyone relate? Yet it happened for this woman. If you know me at all, you know that I had to say to that man that getting surgery the next day was a blessing from God. One of the blessings of listening to others while they wait, he then shared with me that he did not believe in God, organized religion, or even going to church. Although he had been raised in the church in his early years, there had been the sudden death of a parent. I wondered as he spoke, did that experience change his views on God? We chatted for a long time. I could see the pain in his eyes. One of his close friends, whom he described as brilliant, believed in God. He then spoke about a relative who was intelligent, who knew the Bible well. If you are like me, you just heard that intelligence is critical to faith. Let's be clear. God is love. God's love is for all. You know, Jesus loves the little children. God is for all. Sadly, he did not believe he could have a relationship with God. I told him about my relationship with Jesus and how that had developed over the years. We talked and listened to each other for a while as if we were no longer strangers, but friends. I told him he too could have such a relationship. All he had to do was want to believe. I welcomed him to come to St. Thomas where he would feel at home. He felt that was a big leap of faith, but would think about it. He laughed when I said, you could always just drive by our church without going in. He then said I was a great salesman. I told him that I did not believe in coincidence. The love of God made this conversation possible. I did not have a Bible, a business card, or anything to leave with him, and felt that our waiting time was coming to an end. So I again asked him to consider trusting God just enough to talk to him and ask for a relationship. I knew in my heart, if he could only just believe in this bread of life, he would never go hungry or thirsty again. Now, did I know that sparking an innocent conversation with a stranger would lead to sharing my story about having a relationship with God? No. Did I know that I would invite him to try to talk to God? Absolutely not. What I did know was this, Jesus, who we proclaim is the bread of life, is not just here for me. He is here for you and for the world, if we will just believe. Jesus offers us a love that is secure, a relationship we can count on. It is a love that never ends and it is a decision of the heart. For some, it's a leap of faith. 
Jesus is the bread of life. So in believing, we will never go hungry or thirsty again. Amen. Please join me in reciting our two Bible verses on the front. Together. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. For God is love. 1 John 4, 7 through 8. Amen. Thank you, Linda. And so just to